Lauren, congratulations on the show. <laughs> Thank you. Season two. Yes. Uh, how nervous were you going into, were you more nervous going into season two than you were season one? Nope. Far more confident. You know, I mean, I think that it is, um, there's certainly a bit of pressure that comes when the show is a success. But that's the best kind of pressure in the world. I would rather have that than the show was terrible. You have one more season to sort of prove that, that you can do it. Um, so no, I mean, I think that the first thing that I notice now when I watch the episodes as a whole is just how much easier the show uh, is to watch. It just unfolds. There's a like natural confidence to it because it no longer has to find itself. And I think that What's great about the sort of heavy lifting that we had to do in season one, making sure that the chessboard was totally set and you knew what witchers were and what, what mages were and what all the kingdoms were and the political systems and where did elves factor in, all of that's done. In season two, we can just relax and actually tell some fun stories. Um, and to me, like that's, that's the best part of watching it. Yeah, I mean, when you went to season one, I, I only read this this morning, and this is something I didn't know, which was the influence of the way that Chris Nolan told Dunkirk in terms of how you did season one. Going into the first season, I can imagine, obviously, it's like a big fan base with this, the books and everything else, that everybody wants their version of yes. The Witches. So how, how did you kind of navigate that? And what did how did you decide to settle on what you settled on, or the way you, you, way you told the story? You know, I think that pretty early on, I had to, uh, I had to come to terms with the fact that, as you said, everyone has their own version of what, what they would want in The Witcher, how they would want the stories told, what they think the, the characters look like, you know, what is important from the books that has to be there, what can be lost. Everyone is different. This is the most diverse fan base I've ever experienced. Um, and so I had to come to terms with the fact that there was going to be disappointment for someone along the way. There is no way to please everyone. If we tried, it would have just been a watered down mess. So I, w I kept going back to what is most important when I talk to the author, Andrew Sapkowski, what is most important in, in the books to him? And he said, please keep the spirit of the stories. You know, please make sure that the, the, the tone of the stories that I wanted to tell, the sort of um, fractured fairy tales at the beginning, or the idea that this is really about a family coming together over time. Those are the things he didn't want to lose. So for me, it was just about taking those and, and running with it and knowing, I mean, we had eight hours to tell the story. And so I wanted to make sure that Geralt, Ciri, and Yen all got their due that we understood who each of them was even before they started to intersect. Yeah, I was just talking to some of the some of the cast, Henry and Anya and, and Joey, and they were saying about how they enjoy the fact that some of the characters kind of cross over when they might be unexpectedly cross over yes. and all that kind of stuff. Is that good for you as a writer to kind of, because I know in a lot of the bigger kind of superhero movies that they've been able to pick and choose people that fans might go, I wouldn't have seen those two together, but actually they work so well. Oh, it's been amazing. And I think that that, you know, we had to do a little bit of invention in season two. We had to sort of fill out some of the storylines for our characters. And that gave us this opportunity to do exactly that, to say, we have all of these amazing characters set up from season one. How do we start intersecting them in ways that even fans wouldn't expect? And some of my favorite scenes this season, I think for, for Anya especially, for Yennefer's character, she has a couple of pairings that are incredible that you wouldn't expect at all. And then obviously you've been commissioned for season three now, which again, ever expanding, all this kind of <laughs> stuff. Uh, you talked about pressure before. Are you now at a point with season three where you're just like, right, you know, the fan base is there, it's getting bigger and bigger, but we can afford to maybe introduce a few things that we haven't seen before and, and maybe go back and tell bits that you haven't been able to thus far? You know, it's really interesting because actually season three, which is gonna be based on um, the book, The Time of Contempt, which is the next one in the saga, it's actually a much probably closer adaptation than anything we've done before, just because the book is packed full of story. And there's so many, you know, there's great character moments, but there's also great action and the continent is changing rapidly in that book. So. Oddly, it was not a chance to sort of go crazier. It was a chance to lean back into the source material because of what we've done. You know, that being said, it, this is all a balance. You know, that you were at the premiere, the day of the premiere. You know, that day is just fancy and makeup and hair and, you know, outfits. And the whole day I was carrying around a laptop and every break <laughs> I was working on season three, which is just like the life of a showrunner, you know? And it's like, that's, that's part of the fun of the success the success of it. Yeah, I wish you all the best with this one and with season three as well. Perfect, Hopefully we get to thank talk you again so then. much. Thank you so much for your time. Yes, Pleasure thank talking you. to you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.